The decision is finally in, and the Supreme Court says Donald Trump's controversial travel ban, it stands. This morning at a 5-4 to four vote, the court upheld the Trump administration's third version of the ban, which bars some or all immigrants and refugees from Iran, Libya, North Korea, Somalia, Syria, Venezuela, and Yemen from entering the country. The ruling signals a major political win for the president, who last week was forced to reserve, reverse his policy of separating families who illegally cross into the U.S. after photos and sound of detained children drew widespread outrage. Today's Supreme Court ruling uh, just coming out, a tremendous success, a tremendous victory for the American people. It's so simple. It's called, I'm sorry, you can't come in. And now critics are concerned the travel ban decision will embolden the president to take an even harder line on undocumented immigrants already in the country. And while Trump's executive order does halt the separation policy, it does not address the fate of the some 2,000 kids who are already separated from their parents, like nine-year-old Jogo, who hasn't seen his mom in 27 days since they were separated at the border after crossing to seek asylum from violence and persecution in Brazil. Lydia Souza was released after a few weeks of detention, went to stay with family in Hyannis, but Jogo is still being held at a shelter in Chicago. So yesterday, Lydia and one of her attorneys flew to Chicago, where they're fighting for Jogo's release. The family's lead attorney, Jeff Goldman, joins me now. Jeff, it's good to see you. Thanks, Jim. Can we just go to the beginning here? Uh, not only was uh, the mother seeking asylum, but my understanding is authorities concluded that she had a credible case to make when they interviewed her at the border. Is that correct? That's correct. So why would they separate them based upon that? They're not suggesting she's one of those criminals that Donald Trump loves to berate. Why did they separate them to begin with? They never should have been separated. In fact, the president and attorney general Jeff Sessions have said over and over again, if these people would just come the proper way and abide by the law by approaching a border, and legally entering the U.S., all will be fine. Which is exactly what you did. That's exactly what happens here. And in Chicago, the kid was sent to Chicago, I assume randomly, is that correct? Like we, we saw believe. a couple of hundred people sent to New York. You're one of the lawyers who works for you, and the mother are now in Chicago. Can you give us an update? What is the status of that now? It's very frustrating. They had, they had a little success this morning and a little hope, and they're still frustrated at the moment. They arrived last night in Chicago. They went to federal court this morning and filed a lawsuit against the federal government demanding the immediate release of Jogo. And that's all well and good, but after a full day in Chicago, they still have not been able to see Jogo, and he certainly has not been released. What, what is this? So the mother has not seen her son, even though they're in the same city? Not yet. What is the? I hate to play non-lawyer since I played a real lawyer in my former life. What is the holdup? She's the mother. She's free pending a review of this asylum claim. Why isn't, why isn't the court just saying, fine, here's the mother, reconnect the kid to the mother? The court just received the complaint today, and we're hoping for a hearing tomorrow to get an injunction so that they can see each, they can see each other and he can leave with her tomorrow. The court hasn't had a chance to make a ruling yet, and we do believe and we hope we'll they will happen. tomorrow. It's but almost been a month, right, since they've it, seen it each other? It has been a month, And yes. his birthday happened. He was his ninth birthday happened in between? In between, and they refused to let the mother and son have a telephone call on the child's birthday. And worse, we have found out the child spent his birthday in solitary confinement at the detention center because they believed he had the chicken pox. Can you imagine them keeping a nine-year-old child in solitary, itching and scratching, screaming for his mother, and not, it's his birthday, and they don't even let the mother speak to him. How often have they spoken together in these 27, 28 days? How often have they For spoken? most of it, she didn't know where he was. She has known for one week now, and they've only been allowed to speak three times for 10 minutes because very arbitrarily, the Department of Health and Human Services had des has decided that all of these kids, if they know where the mother is and if the mother or father know where the kid is, they can speak maximum twice a week for 10 minutes. Based on what? No reason. What's the state of mind? I and mean, this is almost a pathetic question. So many of us are parents. What's the state of mind of your client when she didn't know where her little boy was? She can't communicate with her little boy. She finds out he's in solitary, as you described, for her birth. What, what is? She's, she's sad, depressed, and emotionally exhausted. 
Does the end of zero tolerance on the part of the Trump administration, the lawsuit, I think it's 18 attorneys general have filed, including our own Moore Healy, does that help or is that just background stuff? It doesn't relate to the specifics of this case. Because one of the things that they're calling for in this litigation, the press release Moore Healy put out this afternoon, is immediate reunification of as many of the 2,300 as is doable. Does that have any impact on what you're doing here? It should, but it's not because to the... From what I can see to the Trump administration, these are just words that he can, the administration can play with. For example, this, there's no end to zero tolerance. They still are going to uh, arrest everyone who's entering illegally. The one thing I think that has stopped is they're not going to force these people to plead guilty to a federal crime. That has stopped. But that doesn't mean they're, they're letting people out. You have a pretty big immigration practice, so uh, you probably have some thoughts about this. When I read the numbers from an administration that has often cooked the books on almost everything, and they say, well, we've reunited 522, this is as of yesterday, of the kids with their families uh, of the 2,300, is there any reason to believe, particularly based on this case here, that that level of reunification has happened? Do you have any reason to... The only reason why I might believe it is because all 522 were already still sitting there at the border in the custody of the Border Patrol. They, none of the children who were already sent to detention centers have been released, not one. We only have a couple of seconds left. Assuming that you're, uh, the lawyer works for you and the mother is successful, they're reunited with Jogo, what then happens? They return to Hyannis and they wait for They'll her return to Hyannis. Hearing? They'll wait for uh, an, a date for her to appear uh, for an asylum hearing. Well, I hope it happens soon. So I hope you'll keep a surprise. Thanks so much, Jeff. Thanks very to much, see Jim. You.